So let's talk about the menu today, all right? Today we're going to talk about Pizza King. And you got a performance lap, do And strike one. And tomorrow you're going to play, hey, welcome to Pizza King. <laughs> tomorrow you're going to play with some Lego. So on the top of your sheet, the, the toughest decision you're going to have tomorrow is the blue lightning or the black mamba. Black mamba. So you don't know. And then on Friday and Monday, we're going to do a rocket lab. So it'll be a lot of fun. So uh, let's talk about pizza pies. Uh, and I have a cookbook here, and uh, the cookbook talks about ingredients. So in cooking, uh, we can have ingredients that we talk about as uh, reactants. And whoa! You mix them all up. And it makes a beautiful a piece of pie. Wow. So let's just talk about it. We need to do some simple calculations. So your phone or a calculator, I need you to do some simple division for me. So let's get something out, please. So I'm going to tell you my ingredients for the perfect pizza pie, and uh, I gave it to you already on the sheet. It's not just about the ingredients, it's about how you make it. But you need a pan and sauce and cheese, oregano, flour, yeast, and a basil. Mwah. But I looked in my inventory and I found all of this in the back of the room, and that's all on your sheet. All right, so what I need you to do is help me out. I have this on the top, and you're going to do something really simple for me. And it's going to help make a lot of sense because of it. If I require one a pizza pan to make a pizza, how many pizzas can I make with what I have in my inventory? So what you do is you look, and what do I have? I have 510 pizza pans, right? So what you could do, and I'd like you to do this, just simply on the upper right right here, put 510 with a slash, and if I divide that, I hope it makes sense that I would make 510 pizzas from the pans. Correct? Yeah. Let's do one more together, and then I'm going to have you do this by yourself. A sauce. All right, so I have 120 grams of sauce and 63 kilograms. A kilo is 1,000, so it's 63,000. So I'd write 63,000 divided by 120. And what is that in your calculator? Five something, I don't know. Five or twenty-five. If I just go, oh, it's a lot, it sounds Italian. I had Daniel in my last class. I was approved. Uh, Damn. <laughs> in fact, I'm not sure he's from Italy. Yeah. So you write a five or twenty-five, and then you're going to do the rest of them. So quickly, take what you, is here. This isn't difficult. Take the number, if it says kilo, add it, make it in the thousands. Put it over, write how many of pizzas you can make. Okay, I'll even give you some music. Yes. If you can, you can answer the questions with somebody as well. <laughs> Do the rest of them, yes. This is Can you use the tape in the numbers? Like 2.5 kilograms is 2,500 or 2,500. 
amount and divide it over what was required for one of pizza. So let's talk about the answers here because this directly relates to chemistry. Which of the ingredients is the limiting reactant? Cheese. Cheese. Cheese, yes. So how many, number two, how many pizzas can be made? Four. Okay, so after 400 pizzas I am done. Now, when I was younger back in Italy I used to work at Pizza King as a junior and a senior in high school. And one time someone called me and said, hey, I like a pizza pie. Let me make pizza pies. So he said, I like a pepperoni pizza. I said, all right. He said, and no cheese. I said, okay, lactose intolerant or hating of cheese. Okay. And he said, and no sauce. I'm like, excuse me? Because I would like no sauce and no cheese. Pepperoni, please. I'm like, so <laughs> you like crust and pepperoni? He's like, yes. I'm like, okay. So I'm throwing the pepperoni on there and I throw it in there and of course because there's less material in the oven I burn it all and all the pep uh, pepperonis curl up like this and it totally looks burnt. I'm like this is a disaster. I take the big cutter and all the pieces of the broken burnt pepperoni are flying in the air. I'm like this is going to be horrible. He comes in and he opens up his Pizza King 18 inch box and looks at it, shakes his head. I'm like oh. I mean, I'm only like 17. I'm in trouble. He just goes, Mwah, that is perfect. I'm like, what? So, you know what? Everybody likes their own pizza pies, but my pizza pie makes these. So, I can only make 400 once the cheese is gone. Uh, if, and if is bolded, that is a true story. If a thousand pieces were be able to be made, what would be the excess ingredient? Meaning, what's left over? Basil. Basil. So assuming I could make a thousand pizzas, right? Somehow, some way, I still would have leftover basil. Does that make sense? Correct. Okay, this isn't any different than what we're about to do with chemistry. Like, it's not even one step over. It's the exact same stuff. And lastly, if you were able to get more of the limiting ingredient, which is cheese, what is the maximum number of pizzas now you can make? 500. 500, right? So, it doesn't matter how much we have of the excess, it matters how much we have of the stuff that's going to run out. And yes, I'm going to try to talk like this, and it's going to probably change into Borat by the time the hour is over. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about the two big words here. Very simple. You know this in your life, but let's make sure we understand it. Limiting means that it's a reactant that's consumed in the reaction. And if it's an excess, it is a reactant that is a leftover or unreacted. So I've never actually had to do this in front of a real Italian before. So last hour I felt very self-conscious about the fact that I might have been extremely offensive and stereotypical of what should be portrayed. But again, when we finally finished it all, we found out who the true Italian actually was. Yeah. Chef Gosway. <laughs> 
Okay, you should have just about that written down. So let's talk about some reactions, let's talk about a little chemistry, and let's talk about piece of pies. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> look at, we spare no expense. This is a burning candle. And here's my reaction. We're going to call that wax. And it reacts with oxygen. You just, just soak it in. All right, here's my wax, and here's my oxygen. What type of reaction is this? Combustion. That is a combustion. So, my question to you is, what reactant is going to run out? Don't answer yet. Let's see the real deal. Heavy <laughs> chemists. <laughs> Wait a second, you weren't around here for chemistry. I heard about it. <laughs> Sometimes I shave and I work out and I, I look like someone else. <laughs> All right, so what's, what's going to run out? The wax. The wax. If you said oxygen, then I'm really scared because we're all going to die real soon then because the oxygen is going to run out. We're in trouble. Like everyone's staring at This is like the worst Netflix movie, like The Candle. It'll just be called The Candle. And then it's like when the candle goes out, the whole class will die. And then it's just this whole thing and we're all stuck in a room. And it, 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 I could make, we could make a minute or an hour and 30 minutes out of that. I've seen worse than Netflix. So yeah, The Candle will... Uh, eventually run out because the wax is going to run out. Hey, Bonjour, no. Bonjour, isn't that the French Tell you. So, it's going to be the wax. All right, let's do something else. Let's put something on top. Ready? Here we go. <sighs> <laughs> You know it. We don't fool around in Italy. All right, I will show you that as well. So now, what's going to run out? The oxygen. The oxygen should eventually run out and eventually... Whoa. We'll eventually run on oxygen. So I'm going to look at this right here. And hey, I ran out of oxygen. It's chemistry, everybody. So the oxygen ran out and the reaction ran out. I, I am a professional. <laughs> What's in here? Gas, water. Propane. Propane. Right? <laughs> Squeeze. Oh! First blow torch lighting, I can tell. <laughs> this is a magnesium. Now, right now, what's the limiting reactant? The propane, right? The tank will dry or empty, it'll stop. I hope, my gosh, or else we're getting in trouble because then something else is happening. I'm going to take some magnesium. And if I take that magnesium, that's just Mg. And if I put it in the fire, what's it reacting with? Do not say flames, heat, or fire. It is reacting with the oxygen. So, magnesium plus oxygen, you put it together, sounds like a synthesis. I'm going to make a salt, MgO. Ah! <laughs> Mamma mia! Okay. Seriously, don't look right at it. Try to look just to the side. I will speak in English so you understand. Look to the, <laughs> look to the side so you don't get blinded. I know, I know at least this area you're all going to be blinded right now. Don't look right at, like, just look a little bit to the side. What's the limiting reactant? Still. Now it's the magnesium, right? Because once this runs out, it'll stop. Seriously, don't look right at it. You can look to, right to the side. You're not, it doesn't need to be scared. <laughs> if you looked at it and you look away, all you got is red spots in your eyes right now. <laughs> so again, here we go. 
come on back. We have reactions, and the reason why they stop is something runs out. Okay? That should make a sense. Something eventually runs out. So let's talk about this. Can we get weirder? Okay, here we go. So I'm going to take some hydrochloric acid. Nothing to write yet. My gosh, we're just taking it in and having a little fun. It's really hot in here. Um, I'm going to have class one, two, and three. And I'm going to put hydrochloric acid in these first. So just give me a sec. <laughs> All right, what I have inside here is some zinc. And this is what we call in Italy a balloon. <laughs> You call them party spheres. I'm trying. <laughs> All right, help me out. Think about making a pancake or a beautiful piece of pie. If I have these amounts, okay? Don't have to write anything down. This recipe requires that I have two of these for every one of these. So which of these three, flask one, two, or three, has the perfect ratio that they equal each other? Number two. two? A lot of people, when you first look at this, will go, oh, it's a one, because they're the same. You've got to keep in mind that I need two of these for every one of these. So I need twice the amount of that versus that. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what do I have? You don't have to write anything. Which one do I have more of? This is the harder part. Like, which one's going to be left over? Zinc. It will be a zinc. Why? Because if I have that much zinc, I need 0.2 HCl. So I don't have enough HCl for my zinc. So it will be my zinc, my HCl will cause the reaction to stop. In fact, what will it be? It'll be these numbers right here. I'll use up 0 0.5, 05. This one's perfect. So then I hope this will make sense that this is too much. How much HCl do I only need? 0.04, right? For it to be double. Okay, well let's take a look. I don't know why that sounds good in my head, but I do it. It's kind of like explode. Chef Gus. Oh! There's a chemistry here! <laughs> All right. So, uh, we made the balloons and accidentally tied half of them already before we did them, so we had to cut the bottoms off, so it looks a little different. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, what's inside the balloon? Air. Well, come on, we're chemists. Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. Now, if I'm in a lab, well, how can I prove it's hydrogen? Blow it off. Split test. Split test. Split test. Eat it. it goes out. Yeah, eat it. <laughs> <laughs> if it goes out, it's CO2. If it continues to burn, O2, right? And if it, whoops, H2. Well, I became a chemistry teacher because of the whoop. So, let's do a little whooping. Let's get a little more out of here. So you'll notice they don't all make the same size either because they, don't, they aren't able to make the same amount of hydrogen due to ratios. Clearly, that is the worst one. I twist it first so I don't let the gas out. I tie it.
if the balloon wasn't so heavy, this would float. See, look, oh, look at that float. Whoa. Right, this is a little tricky. Oh boy. I did, but I can't tape it, so I'm going to tie it, so I'm going to tape it. I hope that works. Oh no! It's a balloon. <laughs> So before I start calculating, please note, it says how many grams, please, I made a mistake, cross out magnesium chloride and just put hydrogen or H2, you can just write H2, so it says on the top, right on the top, do this with me, it says how many grams of cross out magnesium chloride and just write H2, okay? So it says produce when I have 50 grams of hydrochloric acid, write that really small above or below the hydrochloric acid. Write 20 grams or bubber below the MGC, MG, and write G question mark. The reason why is that if I do this, I can now have my problem organized and I never have to reread it again. Now, if we're struggling with G charts or not, it does repeat itself. So if you're having problems, at some point it comes down to you either being lazy or apathetic because. It has the same repetitiveness. You've got to come in and get some help. It will start to work. You, you've got to see the differences. So please, today, try to focus in. We've got three problems to do. Here is the heads up for you. When we have two reactants, this is what we're going to call a limiting reactant problem. So if I had this many pizza, uh, pans, I make that pizza. If I had that many cheese, I have that pizza. So what I need to do is figure out how much of this makes that and how much of this makes that. So. A gram to gram, if you don't know, we have been working since the beginning of the year, a grams to moles, moles to particles. What we learned last week is that there's a thing called the molar ratio, and it just goes the other side. If that can't handle that, just memorize this. Grams to grams, three steps. It's a three-step problem. How do I maneuver through this? Units, units, units. That unit's got to go on the bottom, right? So I saw a lot of people in the performance lab at and what frustrated me was that they were getting stuck, not because they didn't know how to do it, it's because they weren't writing the HCL. So they didn't know what they were going to be writing. If I write a gram, where do I get those numbers from? P 
periodic table. So I'm going to do this with you. So we're going to do this one as well. You don't have to write that if you don't want to right now. I have 36.5 grams. That is just what this weighs. The hydrogen is 1. Chlorine is 35.5. I just get it right from the periodic table. I hear students all the time, I don't know what I'm supposed to write. Write the mass of the thing from the table. What goes on the top? Well, that's one of them. If you envision the flow chart, I'm going from grams to moles. I'm going to moles, so whatever I'm going to goes on the top. How do you know it's one? Because that's what one of these weigh. So probably the most confusing step I saw, sorry, my teeth are coming out. <laughs> the most confusing step I saw Monday is that students are having a hard time with this. At some point, try to make sense of this. It, I hope this clicks. If I start with one thing, and I have to find something else, at some point I have to go to the other thing. I have to start with the beginning and end with the, the, the ending product. So there has to be one step that has both of them in here. That's the mole ratio. So that's a recipe. I use these numbers. This is the only step that I can use a number other than one with a mole. Why a two? Because that's a two. If that was a seven, this would be a seven. That was a four, this would be a four. So if I'm going to that, what number goes here? One. It's a one, because that's a one. If this was a four, that would be a four. And now look, if I cross stuff off, now I have hydrogen. And honestly, if the question was asking how many moles, I would be done right now because my last unit is moles. But it's asking for grams. So if it was a... Uh, so first off, mole goes on the bottom. And then what is one mole? If it was Avogadro's number, I'd be looking for atoms. But I want grams. So I'm just going to simply look that up, and it's a 2. So top I multiply, bottom I divide, I get 1.37. You are going to calculate one later, but I'm going to do this first one with you. And yes, I will go in and out of my Italian. So you're looking at this and you go, oh, what the heck, i got to do a 2? You're not really doing two different T-charts. You're starting with one thing, but you're ending with the same thing. So check it out. I bring grams to the bottom. Where do I find it? The periodic table. That's what one magnesium weighs. What do I put on top? One mole. What's the number going to be here? It's a one because there's a one here. The molar ratio is from the balanced equation. So that's one. But now, the ending is all what I'm going to. So what's nice about a limiting reactant problem is the last three are exactly the same. All I got to do is copy it down. So it's not like I did two completely different T-charts. What I'm trying to mirror is this. If I have that much HCl, I'm going to make that. If I have this much MG, I'm going to make that. If I have that many pans, I'm going to make that many pizzas. If I have that much cheese, I'm going to make that many pizza pies. So, just like that's how many pizzas I'd actually make, how much hydrogen am I actually making? If this is the answer here, what's the answer here? The smallest one. Wait, what? Students add and they subtract. I can't make 401 pizzas. So the reaction, the cooking has stopped. I can't make 1.38 grams of hydrogen because the reaction has stopped. And help me, why has the reaction stopped? I ran out of cheese. What happened here? Please, have an arrow right here and write limiting reactant to the actual formula of HCl. What's this one called then? The excess reactant. Which one do I care about? The limiting. That's weird. Guys, sometimes there's problems where they literally, literally say, these react with that, but the magnesium is in excess. Oh, sweet. I don't even have to do that one then, because I know that doesn't affect it. As I rub my mustache. So, you don't add them, you don't subtract them. You take the smallest answer, and that is my final answer. So what I'd like to do, I'm going to get you started. I'd like you to potentially work with someone else a little bit and try to set this up on the next one. We only have one more example of this. So what we do always, guys, and take it seriously. If you start getting this now, 
you're on the path to doing well on all this because it's all in the same framework. What do I want to do? I want to organize my information. I have 18.1 grams of ammonia, so I put that under there. I don't lose sight of what it means. I have 90.4 grams of CUO. I write that under there. And what am I looking for? Grams of nitrogen. 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 Put a G with a question mark. Well, why? Well, what if it's moles? What if it's particles? If I write that there, then I keep track of what I'm looking for. So, I need two T-charts. The hardest part is understanding that I'm solving for the same thing. Right? And I'll even get you going in the beginning. I'm going to do one half of a half. I would do 17, one mole. And what is going to go, even if you're writing, just give me a moment here with the molar ratio. What's going to go here right now? Two, two. two moles of that. By writing the compound, I am very clear on what I'm looking for. It is two moles of the ammonia. So, please, give it a good effort and see where we're at at the end of this. I will even give you a little music. Hey. try to see the big key and the secret to this is that unit on the top has to go on the bottom. If you're not understanding, have the flow chart out. Why? What goes on the top? The box I'm going to. So if I have grams and moles, I go over to the moles of the other thing. That means moles of the other compound have to be on top. Whatever I'm going to has to be on top. Whatever I'm going away from is on the bottom. Why is that a one? 
because that's a one, right? If that was a six, that would be a six. And then automatically, the easiest place to fill in is the bottom step, because that unit's got to go on the bottom of the next step. Only the mole ratio can you have a number other than one for moles. So automatically, that's one. And what goes to the top? It depends what I'm finding. If I'm finding particles, I write Avogadro's number. Here, I'm finding grams. So what's the grams? 28, 14 plus 14. I multiply and divide. What goes on the bottom here? One Cu and one O, right? I add it up. That equals one of those. What number goes on the bottom here? Mole ratio, there's a three. Okay, especially if we're not understanding, I'm, I'm giving you the, the road map here. It's the, the second step is always from grams to grams, which is the most common. This is my mole ratio, I look right here. The rest of it's been done. If I'm doing a limiting reactant problem, this is all done already. Boom, boom, boom. Like, I, I'm, our, I'm finding the same thing. In Italy, whenever we do stoichiometry, it's boom, boom, boom. Done. I read the answer. And then, please, don't do all that awesome work and then walk away from the problem like this. Vincent, what do I got to do? Or Brock. <laughs> I do not add them together. <laughs> yep, so which one, what do I do? <laughs> yep, so I gotta box it. But you have to box it. can't be like, here, you know chemistry teacher, you know which one. No, I need, a, I need to know if you know. Okay, <laughs> I mean, I hope this makes sense, guys. You would not have done this. Whoops, wait, where's my, where's my pizza pie? There it is. We didn't say, hey, how many pizzas can you make? And you're like, I can make 910 pizzas. But that's not how that works. I can only make 400. All right. That's how fast I do straight geometry. All right. So we're going to do problem on our homework in a minute, but let's finish this up. Here we go. Percentage. <laughs> if I'm talking about percentage, we all know what it is. It's a part over a whole, right? Hey, they shoot 70% on the free throw line. They make 7 out of every 10. So, what I need you to do under the big title that says percent yield, give yourself a little space. We're labeling both these. This is not anything that we're just getting technical with the name in here. There's a thing called an actual and a theoretical yield. Being that, in chemistry, there are reactions that will happen, and they're not 100% efficient. So how much did you make of what you should have made? So the actual yield is what is actually made. You've got to go in a lab and do it. Okay, you can't go to a basketball game and go, hey, tonight, the, our favorite player is going to shoot 63%. I'm like, what? If you don't know that, maybe you hope it, but you don't know that, which is an amazing percentage. The theoretical yield is what should be made. This confuses students all the time. You will get to a problem and go, I don't know what I'm doing. I get percentages, but what am I solving for? So here it is. You always are using this. In fact, I would underneath this always find, I'd write T-chart. Every time you do a T-chart, the last two examples, guys, you found the theoretical yield already. Every time you do a T-chart, you're finding that bottom number. So you need to realize that if they give you another number, they gave you the actual yield. So let's look at a problem in a second. I'll let you write it down. My Italian's disappearing. Let's take a look at our problem. So, first thing, when you're given an equation, we did this on purpose, you have to make sure that you have coefficients in your equation. If you have coefficients, it's already balanced. If not, you've got to make sure that it needs or doesn't need them. And in this case, it does. So I believe that they do not have them at the moment. So fill them in. So this is what happens. 
you're going to get to a problem and you're going to be like, I'm not sure what to do. Did you organize your information? Let's place what I was given. I don't know yet how I'm going to approach it. I have 50 grams of propane. Please don't be that person who goes, I don't know what propane is. Okay, so take a single uh, a moment and have a little effort. That's oxygen, that's a carbon dioxide, and that's a water. So my logic would say that that's probably propane. We wouldn't be like, hey, good luck. We didn't teach that to you. There's probably enough there to figure it out. And then it says that it produces 75 grams of water. What is the percent yield? The minute they say percent yield, ultimately you're going to be taking a division line and you're going to be putting something over something else. So what the heck is happening here? The numbers are on each side. Let me rephrase this once. 50 grams of propane reacted and it ended up only making 75 grams. So what does that sound like? It sounds like maybe the reaction makes a different amount, maybe more, than 75 grams. So what is this based on my equation? It is the actual yield. How do you know that? Because every time I do a, a, yield, a percent yield, I always find that. Always. I'm never given the bottom. So let's do it. Here's the secret step that, you, that we unfortunately won't tell you is that I need to find out how much of this is made. And you'll sit there and go, you've already told me. No, I told you how much was actually made. You tell me how much should have been made. So let's do this quickly together. What am I going to do? Grams on the bottom, right? 3 times 12 plus 8, that's 44. What goes on the top? That's one mole of it, right. The middle step is the molar ratio. What's the mole ratio? The moles of what I have to the moles of what I'm trying to find. By the fact that I have these two written, I have one of these, I have four of those. The middle step is always from the balanced equation. Automatically, what goes to the bottom? Moles. Hey, why don't you have four? I've already used it. Only the middle step can have something other than one. And what's it going to go on the top? Whatever I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find grams. Where do I find grams? Periodic table, every time. If it was particles, 6102 times 10 to the 23rd. So what's water? It's 18, right? 16 plus 1 plus 1. So I get that. So where does that go? On the top or the bottom? On the bottom. That's how much should have been made. That's how much actually was made. So you write as much as you need because we only have one example. And this example is enough to get you through almost every percent yield problem. So I calculate it out and I get 91.7%. Is that good? Hey, if it was a test, it's an A minus, not bad. So the reaction is pretty good. What's the point of this? Industry doesn't always want a reaction or their product or whatever they're creating 100%. It takes too much time, it might take too much money, and they could pump out more and get a higher profit. So different kinds of industries actually figure out where do we want to be on our percent yield to make the biggest profit. Okay, let's take a look at our homework. Hey. I gave you a whole six problems and I'm going to do one of them right now. Wait, are we complaining? I don't have to do it. There's not even a back. You want more. Hey, hey, you always want more, Gus, uh, Chef Gus Way. All right, what do we need to do with the equation? We got to balance it. Please do so. That is easy. Come on. I don't know how to do it. 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 I do it. Organize your information. I have 25 grams of magnesium, write it out above or below it. I got 40 grams of oxygen, and what am I trying to find? Grams. Okay? Why do I do that? I don't have to read it every time. So, 
Just letting you know there's only about three different kinds of problems you're going to have to do. This one, when you're given two on the left side, it's two T-charts. So, there we go. I'll start one of them with you. I got 25 grams of magnesium. Again, why do I know it's three steps? Because it's grams of grams. <laughs> so, I put the grams on there. Where do I find that? The periodic table. 24.3 grams. What goes on the top? That's what one of them weighs, right? What's going to go in the middle box? Two moles of mg. Why the middle step? Once you're in moles, guys, that's now, once you're in moles, the next step is mole ratio. God, I'm never going to get it. Yet, it happens every time. Yet, you can remember the fifth level of the fourth board in COD and where the secret gun is hidden in the drawer in the desk in the secret compound. Actually, I've played four minutes. Whatever. <laughs> There's a game when I was a kid named Contra. And you could get 30 guys by going up, down, up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, select, start. Boom. It's a secret code in Wreck-It Ralph, too. They use it now. I still remember that. So if you care, you can do it. If you don't, then it's tough. I'm going to this. Whoa. Whoa. I'm going to that. So there's another two. Please, I will speak in English again so you can understand. Whatever the ratio is, make sure you're writing those numbers. I get it, you're very smart, and 2 over 2 is 1. But if you write 1 over 1, you're showing us that you don't understand mole ratios. I'm not going to argue that 2 over 2 isn't 1 over 1. But that's not how you write it. And then, then, we'll go back. I bring the moles down here, I don't write the 2 again. It's only the middle step, so that's 1. And then what am I going to do? I add 24.3, and I add 16, and bada bing, bada boom. I multiply and divide, and I get 41.46 grams of magnesium oxide, and it's my target writer. That's great. So, do the second one. Why is it so much easier? Because the second half of the second one is already done for you. Great. Manja. Manja. Means eat up. Eat up the chemistry. <laughs> Because that could be a lot of things, right? It's the actual reactant, right? When we have a test, you're going to make a separate limiting reactant. It might have a line saying, indicate which one's the limiting reactant. Okay. Something like that. Okay? I can talk to All right. So, guys, my, tomorrow, you're going to play with some Legos. Should be a lot of fun. Let's up. Got you. Stop. Stop. But, on Friday and Monday, we are going to do a great lab called the Rocket Lab. You're going to take these pipettes. They're about this big. Okay? Your write-up tomorrow that we're going to give you for Friday is really short. You just got to put a couple titles, answer a couple little questions in a really short data table. 
We're going to fill it up with different gases. Just stop. Okay. You have time. We're going to fill it up with hydrogen and oxygen gas, and you're going to come up with different ratios, and then you're going to have a lit uh, ember, and you're going to squeeze the gas, and it's going to make different explosion pops. And the louder the pop, the better the explosion. Monday, we're going to take a grill lighter that we pulled out of a grill, and the wires are exposed, and we're going to slide it up inside, push the red button, makes a spark, and it explodes and launches across the room. All right, we're not launching them to North Korea, but they will go across the room. I'm going to call it all right now. Gavin's got a little pressure on him because his two siblings have both won the rocket lab in the past. So heads up because he's going to be an assassin. It's in his blood. So thank you for coming to a pizza gang and talking to Chef Gosway. Oh, wow.